Hello and welcome to Gibbs Business. Today in studio, we're joined by Sarah Wild, author of the book, Innovation, Shaping South Africa Through Science. Sarah, welcome to studio. Thank you for having me. Sarah, how did the book come about? As you talk to someone about innovation and they will say, yes, no, South Africa is very innovative. We came up with the creepy crawly. And yes, we did come up with the creepy crawly, the pool cleaning mechanism in the 70s. Christian Barnard did the first heart transplant here, but in the 60s. What I wanted to do with this book was find out where we now, what innovation is happening in South Africa in 2015. The word innovation has become quite loosely used. People use the word innovation. It's an innovative idea, and it's become entirely detached from its meaning, which is using a product or mechanism or idea in a new situation or in a new way. We often confuse innovation and invention. What is the difference between the two? An invention is something that is entirely new to the world, that hadn't been thought of before, whereas an innovation is using something in a new place for the first time. Innovation would be the ISHAC project um, done by the Sustainability Institute in conjunction with the University of Stellenbosch. It's taking place in a township called Enkanini. In Kanini, there are anywhere between 5,000 and 9,000 people living there. It's an informal settlement. So what people in that area want and they can't get is electricity because you can't put the pylons, you can't put in the infrastructure in such a inclement terrain. So now the ISHAC project has turned into a service delivery mechanism for electricity where it is an electricity distribution mechanism using solar panels. None of that technology is an invention per se, but the way that it's being used is innovative. Compared to a CSIR collaboration that created electronic transducers. So on the railway lines that we have running around the country, specifically those that bear heavy loads, like the Sishan or railway line, yeah. they get a lot of wear and tear. And over time, and with the hot and cold, you develop cracks and fissures in the railway line. If that crack breaks, you have the possibility of not just having to fix your railway line, but losing the cargo, which is often worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions of rands along the way. So what they've come up with is an electronic transducer that allows them to detect breaks in the railway line remotely. Because it's 600 kilometers of railway line that no one person could follow and tap to see if it has a physio. Coming back to your earlier example of innovations having been passed, we do have in South Africa the South African National System for Innovation. Has that not led to more and more innovation coming through? Through the Department of Science and Technology, which is one of the main drivers of this national system of innovation, a lot of money is going into research and development in this country, as well as company R&D money. But people don't know about it. So part of what the book tries to do is bring to people's attention this great work that's being done in South Africa and showing a different side of South Africa. Yet, as you mentioned in your book, that we still rank quite low um, compared to, for example, some of the Scandinavian countries. What are some of the causes why we rank so low? Well, South Africa has a very small innovation system to start with. And a good metric of how a country is doing in terms of R&D is looking at how much, what percentage of GDP spend is being spent on research and development. In South Africa, we have still not managed to breach 1%. That means that countries who are spending more of their GDP, and their GDPs are possibly larger, are getting more research and more technological development and innovation for their GDP. So what that means in tangible terms is that we are going to continually be competing with people who've figured out better ways to do things, who've created new products, who are more efficient in their manufacturing or technological processes. And Sarah, with all this technology and innovation happening in, in South Africa and the African continent, while we lag behind the rest of the world, what will it take for us going forward to match up? Investment. Um, unfortunately, it does come down to money because in order to do good science, which is the foundation for any research that's built up, you require funding. And along with that, you require human capital. Um, I spoke to Azar Jamin, who developed a report for the National Advisory Council on Innovation. He said the greatest threat to South Africa's economic prosperity is education, where we need learners coming through the school system who can contribute to this national system of innovation. Sarah, thank you so much and wish you all the best with the book. Thank you.